What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to East vs. West. Today, uh, we're filming this. We're, this is a pre-recording of the intro. We just wrapped up our um, amazing show with Michaela, who played Momo at uh, Halloween Horror Nights last year and has done a wide variety of other characters in the last four years she's been at Horror Nights. Had an amazing show with her today. She gave us so much info about the event um, and a little bit about herself, which was really cool. She was a very nice person. And we uh, are very thankful that we got to uh, land her on the podcast. Yeah, stay tuned for this episode. It's special. She spills the beans. Spills the beans, man. <laughs> but, you know, before we go any further, like always, um, follow both of our channels on YouTube. Edutainment, of course, is Edutainment, Knights of Horror. Um, and, of course, follow our social medias as well. As well as check out both of our merch websites where you'll find East versus West merchandise available now uh, with two designs of course the original og design which i'm rocking right here one of my favorite designs that we made with the anchor and the palm tree uh go check that one out that's the og design designed by my cousin andrew and of course the newly uh as equally as cool design as well designed by adrian from lost tv which is available uh in the store right now so check those out uh rep your east versus west merch man because when we go out to the events we would love to see you guys repping the podcast man um yeah that'd be crazy that'd be dope also, we have yeah. face masks available for both logos as well. So, you know, face masks are a huge thing right now. So get yourself a face mask, wear your mask, and social distance so we can have uh, more haunts open up. <laughs> Did you say do yourself a face mask? I said get yourself a face mask. Oh, I, th <laughs> I thought you were trying to say, like, do yourself a favor and get yourself a face mask. I know. I said do yourself a favor and get a face mask. Or, oh, I don't okay. know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. here's a... Uh, Here's the podcast with uh, Michaela. I hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of East vs. West, the show that gives you your dose of both coasts. Today, we have a very special guest. This is Michaela. Now, Michaela is a very talented person. She, she brought the terrifying Momo to life last year during Spirits and Demons of the East. Uh, the scare zone that takes place in Hollywood last year, it was terrifying, but I think what really made it terrifying was Michaela's performance because if you guys saw, if you guys had the opportunity, the pleasure to see Michaela work, it was terrifying. <laughs> it really was. I was terrified every night that I went, but she did an amazing job. She brought that character to life. Um, Michaela, how you doing? I'm so good. Um, I had a lot of fun with Momo. And that was definitely the best experience I had working for Universal. I did um, Horror Nights for four years as a character. So that was my fourth year. And it just like, it was like, it felt like senior year, like top dog. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Your senior year, you get that big role right there, man. That's how it feels. I've got cast in Scare Zone 1, which is where they they say they, they put the best performers is what it's rumored but they also put the performers they know can take a hit so i definitely <laughs> got hit more than ever i had oh guests no the park i had never had guests ejected from the park until that that year wow so, great, great, like, great. like how how hit like accidentally hit, hitting you oh, no, on purpose on purpose oh yeah. wow I mean, you get hit on accident sometimes yeah. so you have Herman, when you scare somebody, is this like a reactionary hit or like were they hitting you with intention to hurt you? Right. And I had three people hit me with like fully intending to hit me just to oh hit me. God. Like I didn't, even, I didn't even make a scare on these people. They just like hit me. I had one lady shove me. I had another guy shove me and then he shoved me like a second time and I wasn't even like trying to scare them. And then the craziest one, this one guy. I was like going through the crowd and he put his hand in my face. Oh my and god. And then followed me to my supervisor to tell my supervisor that I walked into his hand. And then he was just like being an a-hole, wouldn't show them his ID, so they kicked him out. That that doesn't <laughs> how do you walk into someone that okay. Uh yeah, we got some there's some there's some dicks out in the world. Yeah. we've clearly seen that in the last couple of months there's a lot of assholes out in the world um, and we've clearly seen that in the past at, at haunt events i see it all the time uh when i go to these events i mean it's sad I don't know why people have such a hard time it's i get i mean i've walked through mazes and so it is different when you're in the guest shoes because there's as characters there's things we like all the guests do and we laugh at all the guests being dumb but when yeah. you're in the you're in the guest shoes like it's easy to be dumb like that because you don't know what's going right. on you don't know 
is going on behind the scenes. But but you do know that these are human beings. Right. I don't know the, right. Yeah, I know like, so he'd a, he'd a caution to everyone that goes to these events. If you can't take a scare, then don't come. <laughs> if you can't handle not touching other people, then you can stay home and stay watch home. a movie. Because, you know, they're just trying to do their jobs to bring That's these the characters to life and everything. We aren't trying to touch you. We will get fired if we touch you. Like, right. we don't want to touch you. We want to get as close as we can without touching you. Freak yes. you out. That's the goal. Or if you do go, please read the rules before you do go because <laughs> – they're just trying to do their jobs, honestly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it's the funniest thing when people don't want to be scared. They're just trying to like play it cool, like don't scare me. Like that's what you paid us to do. I don't know. <laughs> um, Good morning. Right, uh, Michaela. We have to mention you are our first like official scare actor guest on our show. Actually, so this nice. is this is a big milestone awesome. for us. Um, I know that you were on our Good Friends uh, Horror Nights Unscripted a couple months back. Um, that was, yeah. Those guys, those guys are fun, dude. Yeah, they've been killing it. I love them. I love them so, so much. So welcome and thank you for being our first on the show. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy to. Eddie, I, go ahead. I did my time uh, working for Universal, and I ultimately decided I'm not going to do scare acting again this year. If right. the event should run, I know we're in a weird time, but right. I'm like fully ready to give Universal my money and like go attend the event because I love being at Universal. Right. But it's the job is, it's definitely got pros and cons. You do make good money; it is a lot of fun, but it's also a huge time commitment and it is very physically demanding and like one of my knees bothers me now and i know it's from last season and like i just don't want to put my body through it again so i'm like i'm spilling all the beans because i don't have to like try to get rehired um <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, that's what we like to hear i mean whatever you can spill for us that's the best thing um but uh eddie why don't you take it away uh, with our first uh, group of questions that we have? Uh, we have a ton for you, and we want to really hear everything that you can tell us as much as possible as yep. you can tell us. Awesome. So uh, you already answered one of the questions. I was writing it down as you as you said it. So you worked for the event for four years. So I was going to ask you in there. When was your first year? 2016. Ooh. It was. I considered it like my first official acting job. Because I went to acting school, and through acting school, I um, met a person who, she is a tour guide at Universal. I, maybe she still is. At the time, she was. And she shared the link for the auditions with, like, everybody who went to the acting school. So I went and auditioned and getting cast. Like, so exciting. I was on Terror Tram my first year as a firefighter clown slash baseball clown so like about half the nights they painted my face i would let them paint my pigtails so make you look as much like harley quinn as you can without getting in trouble so i actually have um Good copyright i love this it. guy that i worked with in my zone like was an artist so he like made us um like that, custom hats. Uh, so like, that's that one of my cool. faces i had painted captain moody because i was captain of my zone that year and then that's I got hit in the face by one of the Hollywood Harrys that year, and oh, I had like not tell. It was a whole thing, so I had him draw like the look I had when I got punched. Oh, and then yeah. there's like, the little that's like the firefighter clown, and that's nice. just, like an outfit I had. But it's I, like that, that hat is so cool. awesome, super sicky. Yeah, that is dope. And you getting hit has been like a, an annual thing now. It's almost tradition. Dude. Uh, <laughs> I, like, the guy, okay, when I got hit in 2016, it was like a total accident because since I was captain of this area that I was working on, they had created two paths on Terra Tram. So it was like the second path I was captain of. So when I was finishing my set, I wanted to make sure that everybody had switched out and like we had enough characters on the path before I left. And I just happened to pass by him when he was making a scare and he like hit me with that knife right in the face. Oh. And um, then they made me go to Oc Health, and I didn't know where I was supposed to wait. Oc Health is um, like occupational health when you get hurt um, or to get wrapped or things like that. That's where you go. And the Universal's huge, and obviously, like everything is all over the place. Terra Tribe's pretty far from where that building's located. So you have to be shuttled from your area to the Hawk Health. I didn't know where I was supposed to wait. So I went down to the tram offloading where all the guests were. And another guest, a guest tried to like put his arm around me to take a picture with me, which is super no, no, like performers right. are not supposed to post for pictures. Like asking them for pictures is pointless because they will just run away from you. Like that kind of thing just makes performers want to not interact with you because right. 
not allowed to propose. So um, I like tried to duck and then he hit the other side of my face with like a ring he had on and like split open the other side of my face. It was a wild night. Ooh. You uh, you actually yeah. performed, and that was one of my favorite tear trams, by the way. I loved okay, good one. the Eli Roth one was just the the, the Hollywood Harry, the, that whole storyline. Like, they, they made videos for that. They kind of made it like a realistic <laughs> thing. They went all out with that tear tram. That was one of my favorites. It was such a blast to work back there. Like, gosh. And it was crazy, too, for me because as a kid, I'm not from California, um, but I came and visited Universal and going on the, on the tour on the back lot and thinking, right. like, oh. I'm going to work here one day. Like, and then, like, fast forward to many years later, I totally I have worked there. Nice. I know, right? And that's such an iconic area where, where the tear tram takes you. I mean, you got the Psycho Motel. We um, would do a world stretches in front of, like, the, the Psycho House. Like, yeah. it was great. It's, it's awesome back there. I mean, you got the War of the Worlds plane crash set. Um all we that were staring just... in that. Like, I was up in that. Yeah, that's so cool. Like, I, that was one of the things I loved about the Terror Tram so much is because, like, me wanting to be a filmmaker, like, going back there and looking at those iconic sets, you're just, like, just mesmerized and blown away that you're actually walking on these iconic sets. Like, it's just – it's an amazing feeling. Like, once you there, once you walk through it, there's nothing else like it, you know? It's, that's why I love Horror Nights so much because – you get to go into like the metro sets when they have mazes back there and go walk those sets that people walk and then you get to go when they had the tear tram you get to walk like the Bates Motel and like the Bates House and the War of the Worlds like I just I always lose my shit when I walk in it like I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it right now it's surreal especially yeah when you are in like entertainment like I have like an acting and production background too so it's like wow to like be like I've seen that movie and like yeah. this is the set like we're here like they're filming movies here right now like, <laughs> and I'm here like you would drive yeah. by like hot sets like and it's like that's because it's a working movie studio and like oh, yeah. what i hope to come back and like be doing a different job you know right <laughs> that, that was i mean that, that's exactly how i felt when i watched uh tarantino's once upon a time in hollywood and then i went back to the, the studio tour went through that yeah. set and I, I just lost my shit because that was like one of my favorite movies and i was like oh my god this is where leo was this is where brad pitt was like just just losing my shit like I don't know. There's just something about that theme park I love so much. It's just because of that history it has. I feel you so much. Like, Universal has such a big, like, place in my heart. I love it. That's why I'm, like, totally, like, <laughs> if they if they run the event, if Horror Nights happens, I'm getting a fear pass. I'm going every weekend. Oh, yeah. I don't blame you. I probably would be doing the same thing. Um, so... You mentioned you've done four years of HHN. Let's talk about the uh, the other two in the middle. Now, you've done uh, yeah. 2016. The first year you ever did it was, of course, with the, the Tear Tram, Hollywood Harry. What was the second year? Second year was uh, I was in the Shining Maze, oh. uh, a skeleton in the gold room. So our big thing was, like, which one of them is real and which one of them is fake. Right. And we just like be like statues and then scare people and like people would lose their shit people would get in there and be like fuck this <laughs> and i would see like grown men i saw jump from the middle of the room out of the room like it was, we got some good scares that year i it was definitely a challenge because i was sitting in a comfortable chair most of the night nice. and i was no, it's just a nighttime event. So we listened to this like slow song, sitting in these comfy chairs in the dark. Yeah. Like one of my one of the other girls fell asleep a lot. And oh it was my like God. we would like we would just go to the cameras and be like Those are some of those beans. <laughs> yeah, dude. They didn't fire her though. We were like, what the heck? I guess it was like late enough in the season, like because it wasn't a problem the whole season. Right. But towards the end it would get it would got bad and then it was like it's like then i'm scaring double time because you're asleep right like i i had straight up would do jumping jacks sometimes when there were not guests in the room just to keep myself awake because it's <laughs> like my job you know you can yeah. have, like on the I, break on your breaks you can like nap a little but like when you're supposed to be scaring is like like usually you're working. on the clock yeah <laughs> If I fell asleep in a in a haunted house and then woke up, I'd probably be terrified. <laughs> like, oh, like, oh shoot, where the hell? Like, <laughs> oh god, that's awesome. I mean, With the mask, like, that yeah. was an epic maze too on both coasts. That the the shining maze was epic on both coasts, and I, I didn't get to experience it, but I, I did see the the walkthroughs of the shining I'm maze. Like, and that was it's one of my favorite mazes. I love well, not to mention that's one of my favorite horror movies of all time, but. Yeah. 
walking through that experience, I mean, they they nailed it, man. They they did a such they Horror Nights in Hollywood has a a really good thing that they do this thing where they can put you into this movie. It could be like a two hour movie, three hour movie, it doesn't matter, and they can sum it up in five minutes. Uh, yeah. And, and make sure they nail every major part of the film, which is always one of my favorite things that they do. And I think, Eddie, you and I talked about that many times, but yeah. Shining, is, Orlando, Shining is one of those examples, man. Yep. In Orlando, The Shining was probably one of the best mazes that year and one of the worst prosthetics in history. <laughs> oh, yeah, they all have, like, the same forehead, right? Yeah. Like, they don't do the mask thing is what's there. Yeah. yeah. And through that, That's it was... They might change it. Well, I don't know with the pandemic, but originally we were hearing rumors of like them switching Hollywood's schedule to like Florida's schedule because it's like, hmm, what's better? Because it's like, is it more cost effective? Like, I think you have to pay more performers more, but like then it's like, will they, is it more because it's less hours? Because I guess in Florida, it's like five days a week and they don't go as late and everything, every position is double cast versus Universal. It's like, four days a week and it's like very intense hours like we literally like i would work 3 p.m to almost 3 a.m like four days a week and then I'll, i was also working other jobs too so i would work another job like 8 45 a.m right to, no i worked 8 45 to 3 and then i would work 5 to 3. Oof. wow how long did 3 p.m in in hollywood what happened I worked at Studio City, at a, but it was a marijuana dispensary, so Badass. pretty chill during the day. And then, yeah. but then also, you were hella not allowed to bring weed to Universal. Like, you will <laughs> be fired. Like, so sure if you have any paraphernalia, have to catch you with it. So I'm like going like straight from like working at a weed store, getting hella like samples on weed to like have to like leave in my car and like hope everything's chill and like go <laughs> Universal. Dude. Jeez. Freaking that was that's 2019. 420 blazing, man. I love that. Dash <laughs> Studio City, come through if you need the the gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in 2000, this episode's taking a, a quick turn. Taking a quick turn, man. I love it. Nah, nah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, there, it was, oh, we had like you're not allowed to, but we had like some times where <laughs> we were vaping weed and like supervisors like. Totally new, and then you did not get us fired. Thank God, because they were also baby weed. <laughs> There's those beans, man. They got spilled again. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't name any names, but we definitely had some had some times. That but they got more serious about it last year. They were like firing people for just Ooh. like talking about weed Which brownies. Which sucks. It's all it's all legal now, so it's like, come on. Yeah. Cause that was uh, we were vaping like that in 2018. That was when I was on uh. Holidays in Hell. The Ooh. scares of me did so well, they turned it into a maze. Holidays yeah. in Hell. Let's talk a little bit about that. That scares them. So that was 2018 for you, Holidays in Hell. What What did you play in Holidays in Hell? I was the Christmas Elf. Okay. Christmas section. And so, based, I believe it's based on my performance as the Christmas Elf that really played a role in me being cast as Momo because the eye holes for the elf mask we're like this big. Oh man. And the Momo ones were like even smaller. Oh man. And I managed to like not hit every guest um, and like do a good job right. with that friction. And, Cause I would get wild. I loved having the big open space. Like that's why I love the scare zone so much because right. you have the freedom to really do a lot. And with the character like the elf and with the character like Momo, there's not so much. It's not like a face character from a movie. So like I kind of got to play with it and bring to the table the right. skills that I had, you know? Right. No, I feel it. No, and everything you've played in, I've literally had, they have a special place in my heart, honestly. <laughs> like, I think this was probably the, you're gonna, probably going to be the best guest ever we have on East versus West, just because oh. of the sole <laughs> purpose of that. First, um, I'm so happy. <laughs> I, I, like, gave it my all. I had a good, I had a good time when I worked all of those mazes, scare zone. <laughs> right. Thing. No, I mean, it's yeah, I have, so much memories going through all those like it is just you, you know you're talking about the the gold room and and going through that shining maze and that was like just going through that maze was just like living the movie you talk about you know hollywood harry 2016 that was like the first time where i was like oh we get an original terror i'm loving this you know you're talking about holidays in hell 
which I've had so much fun going through because, like, one of my favorite scenes in there was when they were playing uh, Shipping Out to Boston and uh, the uh, – the um, St. Patty's Day section, and then going through at the very end, the Christmas section, another one of my favorite uh, scenes. And then, of course, Spirits and Demons of the East, which I think was probably one of the best scare zones uh, Universal has produced in a long time. Well, so, thank you. Yeah. And all was- only because of you. All because of, ah! all because of Michaela. <laughs> Momo, they love the Momo every night, all night. Momo, 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 can we stop page work now? Momo, Momo, Momo. But the best thing because <laughs> sometimes people would recognize you but they didn't know like what they couldn't name what it was like one time this guy goes it's that girl from that thing yeah <laughs> made me laugh so hard yeah because that was like a that was like a big thing for a little bit wasn't it that that whole momo yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. that's where they got the thing. i remember hearing about it on npr like like this crazy momo on the internet making kids kill themselves and stuff right. so, like, that's, kind of, that's all i knew about it going into it Right. So I just, like, they gave her, they gave me a schoolgirl outfit, which I was thrilled with. Cutest outfit I've gotten to wear. Uh, working there. <laughs> Next, well, that or one night I did spend in the Purge Tunnel in 2016. Oh, nice. That was a pretty sexy little outfit too. They have like corsets <laughs> and like little shorty shorts. And, like, <laughs> That's they awesome. did away with they did away with that there in the tunnel. It's only they've only had men in there for the past couple of years. I, I yeah, every time I go through there, that's all you see is the the men. They need a they need to be gender equal, man. They need to put everyone in there. I don't know. I guess, like, maybe I don't, it's, like, things like, like people are getting hit too much or stuff, like, like too much harassment or something. But, like, I feel like that's going to happen in any area. Yeah. Like, it's going to be the, – the issue is going to be, I would think, in the same issue in, like, any area, not right. just, like, a – yeah. I don't know, though. I mean, I don't work in that side, but uh, – Yeah, I don't know. I mean, with Tunnel, I mean, it's pretty somewhat open, Uh but at the same time, it's like there's one way in, one way out. So I can see how they can, yeah. Get out and get away with it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's uh, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard when you get hit because there's like supposed to be security. And sometimes security is there. And sometimes it's like security is where? Because <laughs> you're just trying to keep eyes on the guests that got you and like try to follow them and try to keep a description on them so that hopefully they can catch them if they get away. or Right. Because it's like sometimes you'll get hit and you'll get pulled or pushed and the guests go, they just get away with it because you can't catch them. And, right. you know, they're wearing a generic outfit that everybody else is wearing so they don't catch them. And it's uh, just like, please, if you're going to go, be respectful. Right. Just go and, respectful yeah, and enjoy the event. We're here to have a good time and we don't need to be hitting each other. Right. Yeah. Keep your hands <laughs> to yourself. And mostly during this time. Right. i know right I, what do you think it's gonna be like like if they do the event because they have like they did you know put out the notice for auditions for though for people who worked the event before the message was you don't have to audition in person oh wow okay i know a guy who was auditioning for stilts he sent a video on the stilts because stilts is like they get paid more and it's more of a skill than just scare acting right so i can understand that um, i don't think he's worked as a stilt before but yeah, that's, I guess they're, like, getting prepared, like, yeah. I don't know, like, I heard we're about to have another stay-at-home order in LA. I, I <laughs> don't even know what's going on with the event right now. Um, if you watch, and I'll, and I can link you this one, too, Michaela, there's this guy that we, that we follow that helps us out with, right now, because no one can go to the park, he's helping us out with a lot of footage for construction and stuff, his name is, uh, Santa Clarita Drone. Oh, yes, I've heard about this. Yeah, so he takes his drone and flies over to kind of look at construction. All completely legal. He gets permission and everything to do it. Um, it's and not dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> and he, uh, he flies his drone over, and he, he looks at a lot of these uh, a lot of the maze construction because they've been doing maze construction lately. Uh, and for the Metro sets right now, it's not looking good. They're looking like they're starting to take them down. Um, oh really yeah oh. but for mummy and um the water world queue it looks like they're still up so there's faith in that i'm hoping that because where they had the two mazes for the metro area where they had uh creep show last year they were doubling up mazes right there so i'm hoping that maybe they looked at it like how are we going to social distance this and maybe they're taking them down and moving them but that's just our hope um so we'll see what happens. Um, I'm hoping. It's a long ways away, but I mean, we don't know what the world will be like. Right. That's why yeah. we're living on a day to day with COVID. So we'll see what happens. But, 
we'll see it's, what it's cool to have been in it for like a few years and then i've never and i'll be i've never gone as a guest i, I just heard about the opportunity to work and got the job so i've only walked through it a couple times when i've had the opportunity as a performer on break yeah. so it'll be a whole different so you've never been to the event as a guest so you've never like the the years that you've gone you've never so this would have been like the first year you would have gone in as a guest yeah exactly yeah wow. that was my i was so hyped i was like i'm just gonna like dress up every like night and just enjoy like my awesome outfits because that was something i had a lot of fun with um I wanted to be the queen of horror nights because I feel like the hottest girl that works horror nights like didn't do it. So I was like, plots open and I'm taking it. There you go. <laughs> so I wore like Halloween costumes every day for all of October that we, every day that we worked horror nights, I would like literally like, dress up like full face of makeup, like hair, everything. Um, and I would have votes on my Instagram. And so I would let the fans decide, do you want to see me wear this costume or this costume? And then I would get to work and people would be like, oh yeah, I voted for that one. <laughs> oh, I, for that one. <laughs> I that love one. that. So I feel like I was like the like the queen, like the it girl of Horror Nights. Well, you heard her here first on East versus West. This is the queen of Horror Nights right here. Yep. <laughs> and, and you keep on answering the questions that I'm going to ask. I was going to ask what came first, the scare actor or the fan? Which obviously the scare actor because you've never actually been to the event before this. I had I don't think I even heard of it until like I saw the auditions <laughs> and was like, hmm, that that could be cool. I haven't I haven't done scare acting before except like. We had a zombie run in my town I was from. So we like dressed up as zombies to like scare the runners. Nice. Without scaring kids in my yard once or twice, maybe at the high school walkthrough, but that, that right. was serious. But, um, but you had been to the parks, right? Huh? But you had been to the parks, right? Yeah. Um, I had been to Universal Studios before. Um, I don't know if I had gone before I started working there in LA, once I lived in LA, but I definitely went as a kid. Um, so I had like seen it before I remembered it from that. Definitely like right. so like oh my god, like I'm back here, like oh my gosh. It's what's weird though, because I only really go around horror nights time, like to go and even during them don't go much because free time is limited and sleep is valuable. Right. So it's weird to see it during the day, like with like regular looking like it's when it's not no dark fog, and no it's sound so effects, weird. no metal or freaking dubstep blast into the speakers. Yeah. Yeah, with the yeah, all of it. Yeah, that was one of my favorite things going to on the uh, Throwback Thursday nights was, um, like, they would switch it up music wise. So like they'd be playing '80s on the escalators, and then they'd put all like the heavy metal and everything in the front. And me, being the heavy metal guy that I am, like, I every time I went down the escalators, like I was like, I would make a big old thing when I'd go down. Like, well, they'd play the song "Number of the Beast" by Iron Maiden. And there's a part in there where the lead singer like screams in the beginning of the thing, and my ass, being the, the fan I am, I just screamed out in public because I just I go I go ape shit when that song comes on. But I loved hearing it through the scare zone because it made me think, man, if I was working the scare zone, this music would really get me into the zone of doing what I have to do every night. That was definitely something fun. The way the scare zone worked is it was split into two parts, and there was like angels and demons or whatever and there was like yeah. the, the spirits and demons section and then like the like i don't know they fallen, were hell's fallen angels. angels i believe it was called or... yeah, yeah yeah so it was like we were supposed to be separate until like a certain time and then right. we could go to both sections so on those thursdays yeah that was always like certain songs like when i would go into the front section would get me like hyped i'd be like running around <laughs> like, getting lit on like the freaking crazy music in the zone yeah definitely definitely but then there were some songs we were like really like it would be like like her name is Rio and she <laughs> and we're like so be scary you're like duran duran really come on like, okay. where's the metallica at yeah so there's a couple that were questionable but what would oh we would have a lot of fun at the end of the night we would have for our for our last set because you the way we scare it's like mostly like 30 or 45 minutes you on and then 35 or 30 or 40 minutes so it's like if i would do 45 minutes scaring then i would break for 45 minutes then i would scare for 45 minutes then i would break for 45 minutes that's pretty much how it's all set up sometimes you scare for an hour and break for half an hour depends on what the position is right um pretty much so on our final set um we would do we would call it the mosh pit so we would all like get together because there's like dubstep right. in the in at the end during the 
because it would be during the brigade. So we right. would go with like brigade's music and we would like headbang and like have like a mosh pit and then we would all like stop when the beat would drop. We'd all like freaking run and like That's run awesome. through the crowd and just coordinating together. Right. It's really cool. Um being able to do stuff like that and that's like another thing that they love um yeah. and that's putting putting people together working together scaring scaring together i've seen that and i've also seen the chainsaw chase out too which is awesome the chainsaws are lit yeah. the brigade is so lit i would always go watch it whenever i could yeah. i wanted to oh my gosh after finishing the season i went into it being like this is gonna be my last year i'm just gonna scare this year and like it'll be my fourth year i'll be done and then afterwards i was like I want to be a chainsaw. I'm going to train. Oh, I'm dude. Come back to chainsaw. And um, then I was like, just kidding. I don't want to destroy my body. You That's give cool. Michaela a chainsaw, man. It's over. It would she, be lit, but the she's going to. Oh, yeah. she's, you're going to. You're going to. Oh, weigh as much as you. <laughs> you're going to be like, like 15 pounds. You're going to be freaking dope with the chainsaw, man. Like, if you give Michaela a chainsaw, like, your nightmares are going to come to life, man. You're She's done. Just dragging it on the floor, the metal sparking against oh, the dude. asphalt. <laughs> I dressed up as a chainsaw performer on Halloween Day um, as my, like, costume, and they did not let me hold a chainsaw. I wanted oh. to, like, pose with a chainsaw. Like, I even, I brought um, this, I got this in mask. Look at this. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I have like my battle vest and everything. I was like, can I hold a chainsaw for a picture? And they were like, nope. I'm like, Oops. I guess you have to be trained even to hold it. You need training. Damn. So they're, that's some real scary. They don't get paid more, though. They get paid the same as the other characters. Do they really? The like, yep. The wow. still walk get paid more. But the rest, the blackout performers versus the maze performers versus the scare zone performers versus the chainsaw performers, they all get paid the same rate. Did not know that. Looks like only yep. stilt walkers are getting more, huh? Question. Yep, just stilts. The stilts, yeah, I think, I don't know what the exact numbers are, and they'll be different next year because of inflation, oh. but they definitely made a few dollars more an hour than we did. That's insane. And their, their break schedules are different, too, because they can only be out so much, especially in, like, if it's windy and stuff, if there's certain weather, then, like, they can't do it. It's a pretty intense skill, I guess. Right. But, uh, but there is that. So it's interesting um, being a blackout performer – that's like when they're behind the scenes and they have like they watch a monitor and they use a trigger and they control something that happens in the maze versus being like in a scare zone where I'm running around like jumping at people. Right. Um, it's like two totally different levels of physicality. Yeah. Um, for same pay grade, and <laughs> so it's <laughs> something that may happen if you audition. You may get cast in blackout, but right. you won't if you go into it trying to get cast in a blackout role. You're not going to get the job. Wow. So. You just, they want to see, like... They want to see you, you actually try to put an effort to... You have endurance and, like, yeah. you're creative. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I mean, that uh, that tells me a lot about uh, how it's like. I, I've always wondered that, too, of how the pay scale is on, on different... If you, yeah. get, if you get paid more as a, a, an actor as a, than a, rather than a blackout or... Still, For still the, was the always... Chainsaws, it's yeah. like, a, if they, they like the Chainsaw Gang. Like, there's, there are, like, this little tight-knit group, and they're, like, the elite of like the event they kind of some of them have like an air about them because they're like better because of chainsaws but like they're just we all are on the same level we're gonna bring a new we're gonna bring a new uh gardening tools to the event we're gonna bring in weed whackers see how that goes <laughs> yeah the chainsaw's just a loud prop that's yeah. heavy. but it's no i mean no, no disrespect i love the chainsaws but fortunately they get paid the same i feel like they should be paid more for will than that big heavy thing oh yeah and especially it's so, like, a, a gas-operated thing too. I mean, anything can go wrong at that with that thing. And I, I think that's one of the, the the many things I love about HHN is the the chainsaw smell that you walk in. You just smell that gas coming in. It's like <laughs> it's so unique to that event, just because you know you're like, oh, yep, we're at Horror Nights. And, and yep. they're probably less likely to get hit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Michaela, so you meant so HHN obviously is the big staple haunt here in, in SoCal. Um, so there's other haunts around here. They got the Hound and Hayride, Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, Not Scary Farm. Would you ever be open or want to try out any of those other haunts as well or no? Ah, uh, you know, actually somebody from, I think it was from 17th Door, like approached me and was like, you should come to work at 17th Door. Cause I, um, I went to this show, um, Unmundane, at uh, Beetle House, and they had a woman who I can't remember her name, but she's like an iconic 
um, scare actor. She was in like that documentary, I think Haunters is what it was called. Okay. And talking about, I think she worked at 17th Door or not. Maybe I think it was not. I don't know. But her and like her daughter were talking to me and she's like, yeah, maybe you should come, come work in 17th Door. Like come to work in a different haunt. I don't know. It's just like, it's just so physical and so time consuming. That's like, right. if I have other things going, that was a thing. My third year, I was really on a roll with my acting career. Like real things were going really well. And then I kind of had to stop everything to do horror nights and it like really upset me. Right. And I was, I was like, I'm never doing this again. But then I think I had fun or something or when you're away from it, you forget the cons and you just like remember the good stuff and you want to go back. So right. I, I decided to do it one more year, but I was like, it's going to be my last year. So I can go into it and be like, it's my last year. I'm going to like live it to the fullest, love every second of it. And then call it done and I'll focus on my other stuff and I'll go to Halloween parties and I'll attend the event afterwards because it's, it was a good chapter for me. And I recommend it if you're in Los Angeles and you like performing and you like being physical, like definitely audition or HHN, there you go. Try to get in, but it's right. It's a special thing. No, yeah. I agree. That that sounds awesome, man. I, I I like that a lot. That is cool. Um, you mentioned your acting career. Now, have you so being that HHN is a big horror event? Have you always been a fan of uh, of horror movies and stuff like that too? Yeah, I like horror movies. Um, I also work on the management team of a horror pop culture convention called Mad Monster Party, okay. which is um, – we've done it in Arizona and North Carolina since I've been with them. It was actually supposed to have happened like a week ago or like two weeks ago in uh, Arizona, but it's had to be pushed to October. Yeah. Um, I love the horror community. It's just like everybody looks scary, but that's the thing. We just want to look scary. Right. Like – it's nice and i just like the horror movies are fun they're they're fun to make I, i'm in a few horror movies um it, it's you just gotta, like you gotta i gotta write those down so i can watch them oh i have one that's on amazon prime called kiss my ashes that was a very fun silly one to do and then i did another one um and i mean a couple of james balsama movies one of them just came out um and then one of them hasn't come out yet but i play eric roberts's daughter in that one nice Eric Roberts, no way. <laughs> yeah, that that Eric Roberts, he's a that's, that's interesting my guy. My mom like finds him. I don't know why, but she thinks he's like the most attractive actor ever. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I guess I could see it. He's he's funny to work with. Interesting Spilling. character. Eddie, does your mom watch these videos? <laughs> uh, occasionally. occasionally. <laughs> She'd probably click off by this point, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got his, he's married anyway. <laughs> That's awesome. Right. Question. I, I feel like, I've, have I made horror movies before? We oh, made, like, a quarantine sketch back in the day when that quarantine movie came out when I, like, nice. first had a video camera. <laughs> it was, I think it was more comedy than horror, though. I love that movie, though. You like quarantine? Yeah, I, I love the movie. Have you quarantine. seen Wreck? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Wreck is what it's based off right there. It's like it was like a foreign movie and then they Americanized it. Hi. Yeah. Those are good. All right. So, Michaela, so do you like the scare acting on the on the streets or in a house better and why? Streets, absolutely, because I like the creativity and the creative like the creative control that I have on the streets is like way more than in a maze. In a maze, you're just like going to probably do the same exact the same exact scare right. over and over again and then like set and you're in like a small space like i did a couple nights when i was on terror tram where i did what's called pool so people drop out because this is a hard job so mm -hmm. by you know halfway through the event they don't have enough people to fill out the performer slots so that's when they start to take from the pool which is um people they hire to fill in when people are out and that pool gets smaller they get permanently placed as people quit and then the pool gets taken from terror tram which um I'm not sure how they did it last year because they didn't have Terra to pull from. But in 2016, they, that's how they did it. Right. And so you could get pulled from Terra Tram. Like, Terra Tram ends at, like, 11 versus the rest of the event ends at 2. So mm -hmm. they would pull you towards the end of your Terra Tram shift, and you would go back to Scare Base, put on a different costume, put on a, get a different mask, get, get tram, get or transported to another location where you would continue working. And I did a couple nights in Halloween. Oh. And I was, uh, I was a trick or treater with the pumpkin mask. So you're in like a little, basically a closet with a black curtain, and you're like peeking out like through this mask that's hard to see, through this little like slot to see people walk by, and you have a shaker can, and you just like literally just have to like pop out and shake the can, and pop out and shake the can. And that's like the whole job. 
for like 30 minutes on 30 minutes off or 45 on 45 off whatever right. it was and like i was way more fulfilled on the street yeah <laughs> so um yeah and that's like for me that's what it's all about i loved i was like i made sure i was like exercising a lot before the, the the event which is key if you're going to work the event highly encourage you to train before because you don't want to finally be like yeah strong at the end of the event after you've been working for a month and a half like right. try to give yourself that strength going into it so you can just like freaking kill it all season long right it's right. a lot it's literally like i mean when you're doing like on the street stuff you're work basically working out for 45 minutes right five times a night or four times a night you know yeah no i agree because i i go to i go to not scary farm over there in uh, buena park and they have actors who slide i don't know if you've ever seen that yeah, I've technique. heard of the slides. They don't do that at Universal. Yeah, that, and they they slide. They're sliding a lot of them majority of the night, um, and, and they do have their breaks and everything. But man, that must just be killer that workout right there. I mean, you gotta you probably super tired after. Then you you uh, when you go home at night after the, a, a long shift, you gotta come back the next day and do it again. <laughs> and it's like you're probably sore, tired. <laughs> I mean, you come in very pumped at the start of the, the weekend because, you know, it's coming back into the, the zone. You're getting your character back. But by the end of that weekend, you're just – you're done. <laughs> I so. definitely, like, eagerly, like, snuck CBD in to the park. Oh, <laughs> and, like, yeah, I yeah. Was, like, Sunday, like, that's how I made it through. I had, like, a CBD patch, like – There you go. Because it's just, like, after – because a lot of people like do also work their other job too. Yeah. Like because you have uh, because there's a, a large chunk of the performers aren't actors. Mm -hmm. They're just regular people who really like horror nights right. and like just love working horror nights and live for working horror nights. And so they have to work their other job too. And it's like after working like eight forty five to three and five to three and eight forty five to three and five to three <laughs> and nine thirty to three and five to three sunday is like it's rough the coffee helps for sure oh yeah but you, it's because you still want to deliver that good performance right. like i don't half ask because i'm tired like the people at the beginning of the weekend should get the you know the performance the same at the end or whatever right i agree no it, it is very it is very yeah i mean me I, to, to get me by every week i mean i i come home i have these uh cbd freaking um candy strips that taste delicious and you know tens a thousand milligrams per strip and i want to eat them all because they taste so good but i only limit myself to two so i can relax throughout the day um and they help me sleep at night and everything so yeah no i'm, I'm with you on the whole cbd thing and that's a, it's a big relaxing as far as if you're doing what you're doing as far as like the stress of working a day job but then coming in at night to to do that job and then having to go home and then wake up and do it all over again like yeah it is just too much. I mean, I, I can't imagine me doing that because I wake up for like 5.30 at work. And like if I were to come home at 3 a.m., it's like if I'm lucky, I'll probably get an hour of sleep because it takes me a while just to adjust into my bed. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know. I don't know I if I can do that. Definitely. <laughs> you want to definitely made it possible to work my job. Like because right. going, you have to go home and go to sleep. Like it's like go home, hit, puff it out. Right. wake up do it again do it again because it's like when you have to wake up and do it again so like you don't have time to just feel like waiting to fall asleep right i like that no that's do you even get a weekend off huh do you get a weekend oh, off the, we, we worked the weekend oh during the week i would work this last in 2019 during the week like monday tuesday wednesday i would work at a restaurant and a halloween store and then thursday friday saturday sunday i would work at the marijuana dispensary and horror nights damn but now I only work, uh, I do, um, I work at the dispensary still, and then I do TikTok. Um, nice. So let's talk a little bit about that TikTok, because um, I am very interested about how that came to be with you. I mean, so if you guys don't know Michaela's TikTok, she does a lot of, um, a lot of what I see is um, some tutorials for, for uh, a lot of the vegan foods that you make, which yeah. look absolutely delicious, by the way. Thank you. I like to think of it as vibey cooking videos. Right. Because it's not so much exactly how to make something as it is like, I'm cooking and like, I'm cute. <laughs> it's fun. Um, I love it though. TikTok came about because a friend of mine last summer 
um, actually hit me up and was like, you like creating content. Would you want to get paid to create content for this app called TikTok? And at the time, I was I read the categories of videos that you had to make and I hadn't made any cooking videos at that time and I in right. the and the thought of doing it at that time I was like I don't want to make cooking videos like every day like I don't want to this none of these categories interest me and so I sent an email back to TikTok being like thanks but no thanks like I don't want to do any of this <laughs> and then like a couple of months later she kind of like showed me how to use the app and and was and it really decided like it would be worth giving it a try doing these cooking videos and right this i wanted to do it in a way that also incorporated me as part of the brand not just the food because um i mean coming from the acting background you know that's having growing a following you know can help you with right. that kind of thing so I um, kind of took, I used to just like model my outfits on Instagram and like be cute doing that. So I wanted to like incorporate that with the cooking. And so that's kind of how I came up with how to make the videos and pretty instantly it blew up. The second video got a hundred thousand views in like two days. Wow. Um, it was during horror nights. Actually I had my first video hit a million views and I like screamed. I was so excited. <laughs> um, so I didn't I don't get paid directly from TikTok. She tried. She emailed them like 14 times trying to get them to do the part the paid partnership with me again, but didn't work out. But so I do um collaborations with brands a lot now. And brands right. will send me products and I will make TikToks for them or we'll take photos for them and um we have paid contracts, um, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. So that's like my side hustle that I hope to make a main hustle. Trying to get on YouTube, but it, YouTube is a lot more work. Yes, it is. I don't have the sharpest of skills in that department yet. So sometimes I get frustrated, but I know. Well, Michaela, you can, I, could, you can do I could speak for me at least. Uh, if you never need any help getting up, with, if you want to ever do YouTube, I know with uh, podcasts like Horn Ice Unscripted and, and us, I mean, we've only seen your scare acting side, and I know you have a whole other uh, side to you as far as your cooking, your, uh, your, uh, your modeling for outfits and everything, and, and your photo shoots I've seen as well on your Instagram. Um, there's a whole other side to Michaela that you haven't seen other than the scare actor side that you need to check out. Uh, if we can do anything to help you get that YouTube career started up for you, we would be more than happy to help whatsoever i appreciate it yeah hopefully i'll get it on soon i'll definitely be sharing sharing what i do but until then you can catch me on tiktok you can catch me on instagram moody michaela plug 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 there you go no that was that was gonna be my next question where can people find you on on social media because uh no i think we've had an amazing conversation today we really have it was probably i mean this was probably I would go out and say one of the best episodes of East versus West we've ever done. Oh, yay. Thank you. The best episode of East versus West we've done. It, it, it was fun. I mean, we got to learn a lot about you and your, your, your uh, career at uh, HHN. Uh, not to mention you're our first, like, one of our first HHN uh, performers to ever sit in on any of our shows, really. So that's awesome. I, I, I appreciate that. That You're is so welcome. awesome. I'm happy. I'm happy you reached out. I love Horror Nights so much. It's fun to talk about this stuff because I definitely had a great experience with it the past four years. Right. Uh, yeah, well, Michaela, well. if we ever see you at the event, we're definitely going to have to hang out. And, uh, yes. Hopefully we'll be there, I guess, six feet apart right. with a mask. On. Six feet <laughs> apart, know. wear a mask, all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> so now the performers are wearing masks and the guests are wearing masks. I know, we'll right? See. We'll so, see. Like, that was my thing this year too. Is like, how are they gonna do that for performers? Yeah, they have to wear a mask the under the mask, or it's like they, I mean, a lot of people do already. I oh, mean, do they, they really? Wear, yeah, ninja hoods under okay. the mask uh, because yeah. it helps with the sweat because it's it's hot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I I get that. Yeah, I think I've seen a couple people do that at knots actually to kind of hide their face so they kind of have that whole effect. Helps. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. But um, Michaela, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, and we hope to work with you again sometime soon because um, we had a we had a blast doing it today. And, uh, yeah, so go follow Michaela on all her social medias. Links will be down to everything in the description below for her TikTok and her Instagram so you can check that out. Definitely follow her on TikTok because she has quite the following, man. I am pretty proud of myself for that. I grew that all organically. I didn't even pay for it. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the best thing. That's the best one. That's I think that's where all all small YouTubers are trying to do too. Everything's organic, and 
much like uh, that. Michaela knows how that is too, growing it organically. That's awesome. Yes. Um, Eddie, any final words you want to say before we log off? Oh, just thank you for being on the on this episode of East versus West, Michaela. We really appreciate it. And just a, a little bit of additional support. You have already the energy and the the personality for YouTube, so I, I would suggest just jumping in it. Thank you. Yeah. I need the, I got some scripts I need to write. I have some ideas of videos written out. I'm I'm learning constantly, educating myself, and hopefully I'll be on your platform here soon. <laughs> oh yeah. So be be on the lookout because when she goes on, we're gonna promote it. You guys can better subscribe. All a thousand of my subscribers better go over to subscribe to Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> um thank you so much, Michaela. You have a you have yourself a wonderful evening, a wonderful day today. Uh, you too. And to all my audience out there, be safe out there. Wear your mask. Of course, social distance. Uh, we love each and every one of you. Thank you for watching this episode of East versus West, and we will see you guys on the next episode. Deuces.